Let's talk about our internal body clock, known as our circadian rhythm and the impact that that can have and the connection that has with our metabolism. Now, an example of our body clock is our sleep to wake cycle. The circadian rhythm controls all different systems and cycles in our body. You know, it, it controls the daily rhythm in a cycle of around of of exactly 24 hours and we have a master body clock that is almost like the director of the orchestra that controls the circadian rhythm of each cell in our body and it influences all kinds of things in areas of our health but every aspect of our metabolism so our hunger our digestion as well as when the hormones and the enzymes to do with digestion and, and appetite and piety in this whole process are produced. So it's really important that we think about all the locations that this has the disruption of the circadian rhythm and what it can lead to in terms of, of our metabolism. So one of the things is reduced rise of the, uh, the hormone leptin in the evening. Now the hormone leptin is our satiety hormone so that's the hormone that tells us that we're feeling full and we're satiated and we don't need to eat more so as you can imagine if we don't have so much of a rise of that in the evening we're going to feel more hungry in the evening we're more likely to want to snack or binge or just continue eating a leptin release is supposed to peak at about 2 a.m roughly and its lowest point is actually at about 12 midday so that kind of makes sense with if we were having regular sort of um, activity during the day and sleeping at night so the higher levels at night are supposed to suppress the hunger and not interrupt sleep now another thing that the circadian rhythm impacts is the release of insulin and i talk about this a lot this is the hormone that allows us to get glucose that has come from the process of breaking down our food into our cells to be used as energy because we don't want it just circulating around in the blood because that becomes very dangerous for us. Um, but also insulin is a fat storage hormone as well. So it will store glucose as fat. You can imagine the impacts that that can have when our, we're not in line with our circadian rhythm. The release of cortisol, our stress hormone, can also be impacted. A link there with cortisol and our body's release of glucose as well. So you can imagine that that, that has an, a, a big impact on many things. When we've got constant release of cortisol, we're trying to flood our body with glucose because we're trying to have a quick reaction to get away from a sort of saber toothed tiger in that situation that would have happened many, 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 many uh, years ago. But we still have that same mechanism. But if we're constantly releasing uh, cortisol uh, as a stress release, thinking back to our circadian rhythm, this can impact the release of cortisol. And it can also impact the release of ghrelin. And ghrelin is our hunger hormone. So this can become very disrupted. Ghrelin is supposed to just be released during the day and it is supposed to be higher in anticipation of our meals. Now, this is one of the reasons why I always recommend trying to get into a bit of a cycle of eating your three meals a day at regular times. And, and then it's possible because your body knows when to expect its meals and the metabolism can work more efficiently when it receives the food in line with the internal body clock. So you can see how this is so interconnected Many people that I've worked with, they tell me before we've done the work that they've been skipping breakfast, they've been doing intermittent fasting, time-restricted eating, um, and just been generally erratic with their eating, skipping meals in the day and then binging in the evening. And you can see the impact that this can have. In line with what's going on here, it's recommended to eat larger meals at breakfast and lunch. Um, so the studies have found that this can help in terms of weight. However, there is a caveat that the majority of these studies were done using volunteers who were young, healthy males. So it doesn't necessarily translate to the rest of the population. So we don't know for sure more studies are needed on that. Certainly eating in that way would be more in line with the body's internal body clock and trying to 
to keep everything regulated. As you can imagine, for shift workers, this is really difficult. And if you're a sh shift worker, there will be disruption in your circadian rhythm and you know it can have consequences. Research indicates, for example, that there's a higher incidence of weight gain and diabetes with shift workers because we know that eating late at night when the body isn't ready for its food, our metabolism is likely to be less efficient and it will send those leptin and ghrelin hormones into dysregulation. But also it's important to note that a disruption in your metabolism uh, may also lead to a disruption of the circadian rhythm. For example, you're someone who has been on and off diets or you're still on and off diets or restrict your food that disrupts your metabolism. Really important to try and think about actually how can I put in my three regular meals in the day, balanced meals, it's such a good starting point. But it's also important to remember that we are all individuals. The professor who is a, sort of an expert in circadian rhythm, Professor Russell Foster, talks about the fact that we're, there are three different body clock types. Some of us are better in the morning, some of us are more evening people. You have to take all of that into account, plus lots of other individual external things that are going on as well. I also discussed in my blog um, yesterday how some people can become obsessed with timings or eating very little in the evening and this can be problematic as well because you can uh, end up leading to blood sugar, blood glucose dips and you can end up starving hungry and a lot of people that impacts their sleep and then that can have an impact on everything else the next day as well so um, but also people can end up binging at the end of the day again because they haven't eaten enough in the evening um, so you know as with everything this is all about balance and working out what works for you as an individual um, and that's the important work that I do with my clients because there's no one size fits all uh, there are certain things that can be really helpful but we need to work with what's going on in your life and your individual biochemistry, genetics and health history and everything that comes into the mix. But you can do a few things that can help to reset your body clock every day and one of the key things is trying to get light exposure between 30 and 60 minutes after sunrise. So going out for an early morning walk if you can is amazing for that. If you've got a dog it's an ideal opportunity to get out, ideally not too late after you've woken, um, not too long after sunrise. But if you are someone who has to rush off to work, what is it that you can do to fit that in? Is it that you can, uh, say, get off uh, the bus a little bit earlier so you can have a little walk or something like that? Work out how you can fit that into your day because it has obviously so many um, benefits um, as well in addition to uh, circadian rhythm uh, sort of benefits but also um, trying to not be exposed to really bright artificial light um, before bed so trying to dim your lights in the evening about an hour before you go to bed can be really helpful obviously screens and things trying to sort of limit that as well and also trying to be in regular sleep routine so trying not to sleep in really late at the weekends for example to catch up trying to keep to a regular routine and getting up at a similar time during the week and the weekends can also be really helpful i would love to hear from you how's your eating habits at the moment when is your main meal have you changed anything around recently what's, what's worked for you are you having your three meals a day or is it something that you might want to try perhaps it's something that for many of you, it might be a first step. How can I start being more regular with my meal times and seeing what impact that has? Till next week, take care and have a lovely week.